divine truths frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. The subject of this session is spirits. This is session one. Where do spirits exist or live? Well, they live in a wide range of places in the dimension that's not of the physical dimension. So in the spirit dimensions, there are at the moment 36 other dimensional existences, other, including the earth-based dimension. And spirits may live in any one of these dimensions depending upon their condition. So it depends on their condition of love as to where they actually live. Now, for the majority of people who pass from this earth in the first instance, they generally are not aware that there is a spirit world and so therefore they become very bound to the earth. They, they want to stay on the earth. They, usually all of their loved ones are on earth. All of the people they care for are on earth. All of the people they're interested in, their life still on earth, their life that they were interested in is still on earth. And so what they finish up doing is they focus their energy and attention on staying on earth. And so we do have a lot of spirits many around 20 billion spirits or so who are currently living on earth with us they are invisible and we are physical they can see us but we can't always and for the majority of people none of us can see them mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that they don't feel that they have productive lives doing all sorts of things because they do many of them still work many of them still think they're going to work and many of them still think they're digging holes and many of them still think they're living in a house and many of them still think all sorts of things actually that are not real anymore. Mm -hmm. When I say not real, they're not what they have to have as the reality of their life but, but they choose that reality because they can't cope emotionally or psychologically with, with accepting any other possible existence. Once a spirit moves beyond that position, he then moves usually, he or she then moves into the first dimension of the spirit world where they're now conscious that they are a spirit, they're conscious they no longer have a material body, they're conscious that there's been a change in their condition, if you like, a change in their experience. And, but their condition in love determines where they can live. Mm -hmm. So if their condition in, of love is the average person's condition you know, in the, who, who passes from the earth to the spirit world, then they can only live in the first dimension of the spirit world. Um, and if the condition of love is worse than that, then they'll live in what's called the hells of the spirit world, which is in the first dimension. They're in the first dimension of the spirit world. But they are places that are dark and dingy, without light, and often smelly. And, and they, the condition matches the condition of their own soul in love. Mm -hmm. so, so spirits range from that condition right the way through to what people would classify as a divine angel a person in the 36th dimension which has completed the soul union state and um, is an amalgamation of two people who used to live on earth. They have still two bodies generally attached to their soul and two spirit bodies attached to their soul but they've now become one soul again. That particular person is an immensely beautiful state, uh, full of love and compassion, full of uh, sympathy for all the rest of the people in the other states. And uh, as a result, um, they are able to trans go through any of these dimensions, through the entire 36 dimensions, whereas the spirit in the first dimension has no option of going to the second dimension. Unless they raise their condition in love, there's no option of tra going transcending the first dimension and into the second. So the spirit in the first dimension often cycles between the earth and the first dimension. And that might happen for hundreds of years or even potentially thousands of years, although generally it doesn't happen for thousands of years because most of the people they're interested in eventually pass as well and disappear from the earth. And so eventually most people find through the disappearance of their relatives and their friends from the earth that they themselves come to see that they've also died and that they've also must be now a spirit living in a spirit form. And so they come to understand a few of the basic truths of the universe just through that experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in terms of where they live, they can live from the depths of the what are classified as by the spirits as the hells of the spirit world in a very dark condition where they can barely manifest a, a spiritual form right the way through to the 36 dimensional condition, which is a soul union condition, where they can manifest hundreds of thousands of forms at the same time and can also manifest physical bodies on the earth if they, if they wish to come here and express certain things under certain conditions. 
Whereas a spirit in the lowest of the hells or who is earthbound, it's very highly unlikely that without assistance they can manifest a form of any kind unless it's some kind of ghostly apparition. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if they tried to manifest a form that's purely physical, they usually don't have enough energy to do so. And also it degrades the energy that helps them maintain their form of their own spirit body. And so most of them can't manage such a thing for any long periods of time. So you're saying that spirits can live in a lot of different places mm -hmm. from the earth. They can still remain living on the earth mm -hmm. even after mm -hmm. they pass. Yep. And then there's this, these dimensions from 1 to 36. Mm -hmm. where, where are those dimensions? Are they... Well, now we're talking about sort of dimensional existence. And dimensional mm -hmm. existence has... With a dimensional existence, you have the ability to occupy the same space at the same time, but be, 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 have in a complete, be in a completely different location. And this is something, of course, that uh, mathematics has proven as a possibility. Um, and in fact, I think at this stage, we've proven on Earth that uh, through computation that there are around 13 dimensions um, through mathematics but we don't have the computational power on Earth at present to, to prove the existence of the 14th dimension. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying is there's 36 of them. Mm -hmm. and, and these dimensions exist in simultaneous reality. So they are like, if you like, different universe taking up the same space at the same time. Now, when I say that, they are separated through, through, uh, through existences and they are separated, they can be separated in terms of space, they can also be separated. So they're not always taking up the same space at the same time. And, and in fact, the, if there are three primary things that take up space in the same place at the same time, and that is the, the sphere that is the physical, which is the physical universe. Then there's the spheres that you would classify as focused on the spiritual, which are from the first sphere through to the 35th sphere. Mm -hmm. And then there's the spheres that look after the soul, and that is the 36th sphere onwards. And so those three particular states of the human soul take up different places at, at the same time. <laughs> and, uh, and so well, now we're starting to get a bit complicated sure. with regard to the question. So, sure. but, but the reality is that any person who passes is still a person, mm -hmm. and we must, must remember that. And this is they're still a person with the same ideals they had before they left Earth or lack of ideals, mm -hmm. the same uh, emotions that they had before they left Earth, the same belief systems before they left Earth and so forth, but with a few modifications depending on their awareness of their change in their condition from death, you know, from, from death of their physical body to being alive in the spirit body. And uh, sometimes some of the spirits become aware of that instantly depending on their knowledge that they had before such an event whereas other spirits may take thousands of years to come to that awareness and there are still some spirits who are currently earthbound who have not had an awareness for 50,000 years. Uh, but that is usually very unusual mm -hmm. and requires some fairly unusual circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, they all receive a lot of help to come to an awareness, so there has to be a lot of resistance to help and a lot of resistance to being taught before a person exists in that state for such a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, and you're also saying, from what you said earlier, that there's all these different dimensions that mm. say I pass now, I can go and live in, mm -hmm. but that might actually change, just like it might change where I live here on Earth during throughout my life. I can continue to change the place that I live in. Of course, yeah, because um, the place you live in is dependent upon the condition of your soul in yep. love. Yep. So if the more loving you become, the better the place you can live in is in the spirit world. The more unloving you become, and it is possible to become more unloving in the spirit world after you've passed, yeah. and many spirits do that, the worse their condition is that they live in, in the spirit world or on earth as they regress. So we have the potential to regress or progress even after we've passed into the spirit world. There's no such thing as being locked into the condition once we've passed. Mm -hmm. However, there is this state where we do have to reap <clears throat> what we sowed while we're on earth once we pass. There is a law that controls, what, and it's called the law of compensation, that controls what happens to us after we pass, depending on what we chose to do before we passed. 
And so, of course, there are many spirits who are reaping the consequences of that law after they pass. Mm -hmm. And that's why many of them feel like they're being punished. Mm -hmm. The reality is they're not being punished. They created the location and the condition of their soul. And therefore, the location where they currently exist will have the restrictions based upon what condition of their soul has been created by them themselves. And, uh, and so this is a loving law to help a person come to see the results of their own creations and the importance of acting in more harmony with love in their lives in the future. Mm. Mm. But the conditions of spirits vary widely, um, as you know, from, yeah. being, from being hellish, demonic in their condition. What the average person on earth would classify to be a devil, uh, a person who is totally malevolent and totally wicked, unable to sustain any loving thought mm -hmm. uh, or very few loving thoughts, right the way through to a person who has no evil in them whatsoever, no, only in harmony with all of God's laws of love and completely compassionate and understanding and being able to maintain huge amounts of power in that state and huge amounts of bodies, in fact, in that state as well. So the, there's a large range from one to, to the other of where ex spirits live and how they live. And, and obviously that condition defines where they live. That's what you're saying. Exactly. It? It's the always the condition of love in their soul that defines where they live and also defines the conditions under which they live. Uh -huh. It's the condition of love that attracts the subsequent environment and God's created it this way so that a spirit can become conscious of the fact that there is a relationship between love and its environment and between love and its own condition and mm -hmm. between love and its own experience. And God's always trying to teach us this relationship between love and what happens to us. And, uh, and so, unfortunately, though, uh, most spirits are not very conscious, and particularly earthbound spirits, the, the ones that are the 20 billion or so that are surrounding the earth, they're not very conscious of the fact that there is this relationship. And, and usually there's a lot of other spirits trying to assist them to become conscious. But unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, cynicism on earth and a lot of belief systems that are very rigid on earth. And unfortunately, most of the spirits carry these, this cynicism and belief systems into the spirit world. And that makes them very resistive to being taught any new truth. Mm. And as, a, as such, they often remain in these quite dark conditions and quite restrictive conditions for long periods of time until they realise that they can progress out of those conditions. Mm. Mm.